Hey guys, this is Roll Advantage. Um, I am Dakota. I will be your DM and hopefully your deity in this episode as we talk about clerics and why you should become one. So, at first level, all clerics become proficient with light armor, medium armor, and shields. They are also proficient with all simple weapons, but they don't get any tool proficiencies, which makes sense. They're, they're clerics. They only listen to the Lord and their their God's word, so their hit die is a D8. Um, they have saving throws with wisdom and charisma, and they get to choose from two skills, so history, insight, medicine, persuasion, and religion, which makes sense. Um, for equipment that they start off with, they get either a mace or a warhammer if you are proficient, so if, if you're a dwarf, you automatically get that proficiency if I remember correctly. Um, you get to choose scale mail, leather armor, or chainmail if you're proficient. Chainmail is a heavy armor, so um, we'll go back uh, at the domains listed down below at level one, and some of them actually give you heavy armor proficiency. So we'll take a look at those later. You get a light crossbow with 20 bolts or any simple weapon, so a mace again. Um, you can have an, a priest pack or an explorer's pack. And then you also have a shield and a holy symbol. So, you're a little bit more bulky than previous editions where you stay in the back and just heal people. This time, in 5th edition, you actually can get up into the fight and get close to enemies. You don't want to get too close. Don't don't try and treat yourself like you're an actual fighter. Um, because, unfortunately, you will go down. And if you're the only cleric, no one can really heal you. So, don't try and be that person. Clerics happen to be full spellcasters. And with this, they have a list of spells... Uh, a cleric spell list, and they have additional spells depending on which domain that they go under. So I believe that you use wisdom as your spell casting ability modifier, so you will want wisdom quite a bit. Preparing for for clerics are actually really really nice when it comes to spell casting. Um, other um, spell casters usually have a set list of spells that they only know, that they have to pick and choose from that list, and so you can go through as a wizard per se and only select certain um, spells that you know, and then you have to prepare them. Well, for clerics, you can actually swap out your list any time you take a long rest, and you can prepare these off of your head throughout the entire spell list as long as you have spell slots for them. So these spells that you have prepared, you can actually have equal to your cleric level plus your wisdom modifier. So you should be starting off with maybe three or four different spells um, that you can actually prepare per day, and you can switch them up. So you have a channel divinity at level 2, and what this does is it lets you do different things, and you have more uses than a paladin who also gets channel divinity. Um, this also does fall in line with your domain that you get to choose, and there's many domains that we'll go over later on in this video. So your first channel divinity power is turn the undead, and so you hold out your holy symbol, you channel this divinity from your holy symbol, and it turns any undead creature away from you. And so they have to flee from you after doing a saving throw, I believe, and it's within 30 feet. At level 4, 8, 12, 16, and 19, you also have the ability score increase. So, like any other class, they usually get them at this level. Um, you have the two points that you can put anywhere on your ability scores, or you can take an optional feat if your DM allows it. So at level 5, you have destroy undead, and so Starting at level 5, you can automatically destroy creatures that are undead creatures with a CR rating of 1 half or lower. At level 8, you can do it if their CR is 1 or lower. At level 11, 2 or lower. At level 14, 3 or lower. And at level 17, 4 or lower. Divine Intervention. This one's actually a really interesting one. So at level 10, you get this Divine Intervention which once per week, so every 7 days, you can actually call to your god and try to have them give you help when you are in need of it. So you take a percentile die, which happens to be 2d10. One of them will have one number on each side, so 1 or 9 or 7. The other die will have two numbers on it, and it'll usually end in 0. So there will be 0, 0, 5, 0, 9, 0. It all depends. And so you roll them together, and then you add them up. So if I rolled a 5, 0 and a... Three, that would be 53, which means I got a 53 out of 100, so 53%. In order for your domain god to actually come down to you, you need to roll a number equal to or less than your, your level that you are casting it as.
So starting at level 10, you need to roll a 10 or lower. So hopefully zero, zero, and then seven or three or four, something like that. So we're gonna talk about your domains now. Starting off, it's going to be the knowledge domain. So at level one, when you choose this domain, you get the command and identify spells prepared at all times. You don't even have to choose them. They don't go against the spells that you know, that you can prepare. At level three, you get augury and suggestion. At level five, you get non-detection and speak with dead. At level seven, you get arcane eye and confusion. And at level nine, you get legend lore and scrying. Also at level one, you get blessings of knowledge. So you get to choose two languages that you automatically know then. And then also you get to choose two skills out of the following to be proficient in, which is arcana, history, nature, or religion. And your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check that you have that uses either of the skills. At level two, you get another channel divinity. So you get to choose knowledge of the ages. And so you can choose this and tap into a well of knowledge. And as an action, you can choose any skill or tool and you can um, have proficiency in it for 10 minutes. Um, so if you really, really need something to do with um, blacksmith tools to create something, you can use this channel divinity and get that uh, proficiency then. At level six, you get to use another channel divinity called read thoughts. And so you can actually read a certain creature's thoughts that you get to choose, and then you can access their mind and command it. So what they do for that is they have to do a wisdom saving throw against your spell DC, which is 8 plus your wisdom modifier plus your proficiency bonus. If it fails its save, then it has to um, reflect its current emotions to you um, that your DM would tell you. And that would happen for 1 minute and it's within 60 feet of you. During that time, you can actually use an action to end this effect and then cast the suggestion spell on that creature without using a spell slot. So you have potent spell casting at level 8. What this lets you do is whenever you cast a cleric cantrip, you can actually add your wisdom modifier to its damage. And then lastly, you have visions of the past. And so at level 17, you can um, grab an object and you can tell what has happened to it within the, um, I believe the last 24 hours can't remember off the top of my head um, and you can get an area reading also so you can detect what has happened lately within the area life clerics when you take this domain they get bonus proficiencies um, with heavy armor so again this is one of those few domains that you can start off with heavy armor like that chainmail so also at first level you get the disciple of life and so whenever you use a spell of first level or higher to heal someone um, they get to regain additional hit points equal to 2 plus your spell level that you're casting. So if you're doing a Cure Wound spell at level 1, they get an additional 3 health when you cast that spell on someone. So at level 2, you get an additional channel divinity called Preserve Life. And so you can use this by holding up your holy symbol and any creature within 30 feet of you. You can actually heal them uh, equal to your Cleric level times 5. So you have these points that you can split up between them. Um, so if the fighter needs seven hit points and the bard needs three and then the, the ranger needs another ten, you can do that and still, still heal them. Unfortunately, that does not stack with the Disciple of Life because this is a channel divinity and not a first level or higher spell. So at level six, you have a blessed healer. And so whenever you cast that healing spell at first level or higher, you actually gain maximum health too, equal to two plus that spell level. So... I mean, you get free healing out of just healing other people and being friendly. So, at level 8, you have the Divine Strike. And it's not the same as the Paladin Strike, the their Smite, um, but it is similar to it. So, once per turn, when you hit a creature, you can actually deal an extra 1d8 damage that's radiant to that creature. At level 14, that actually increases to 2d8. So, at level 17, finally, you have Supreme Healing. And what that lets you do is you can use the max die for healing a creature um, when you would use a spell. So say you're healing with um, Cure Wounds, again, because that is sim super simple, um, and you're casting it as a third level spell. So normally that would be 3d8 then, right? Well, since you can now use Supreme Healing, um, you heal 24 points. So you're healing 8 plus 8 plus 8. So 3d8 or 3 times 8 
you're healing for 24 points then. So, going on to the light domain, you actually get to um, get the light cantrip if you don't already know it at first level. So also at first level, you get Warding Flare. So you can do this equal to your Wisdom modifier per day. Um, a minimum of once if your Wisdom modifier is negative or zero. So whenever a creature actually attacks you within 30 feet, you can use your reaction to cast a blinding light causing them to have disadvantage on their next attack against you while they're trying to hit you. So that can potentially make them miss. Um, but you can't use this after they actually do hit you. So if your DM has says that they already hit you, you cannot actually intervene with your reaction. So you have a new channel divinity at level 2 called Radiance of the Dawn. And so you can hold your holy symbol and within 30 feet of you, all magical darkness is now white. Magical darkness, if you don't know, um, if you hold a torch into it, the darkness fully absorbs it and you can't see into it unless you have uh, special spells such as the Warlock who has the Devil Sight invocation and they can see through that. Also any creature that is hostile towards you makes a constitution saving throw and if they fail it they take 2d10 radiant damage plus your cleric level. So improved flare at level 6 um, is just the same as warding flare except this time you can use it on a creature that's attacking someone else other than you as long as it's within, thir within 30 feet. At level 8, you get potent spellcasting, just like the domain before, so you get to add your wisdom modifier to any cleric's um, cantrip that you're dealing damage with. Lastly, for the light domain, you have Corona of Light. So for a minute, at level 17, for one minute, um, you cast this bright, immense light that radiates from you for 60 feet that's super bright, and then 30 feet after, it's dim light. And any creature that is hostile within that 30 feet has disadvantage on saving throws against any spell that deals fire or radiant damage. Next is the nature domain. So at first level, you have the Acolyte of Nature. So you get to learn one druid cantrip of your choice, and then also have proficiency in either animal handling, nature, or survival. Also at level one, you have bonus proficiency with heavy armor. So at level two, you have another channel divinity. This time you can actually charm plants or creatures. So Within 30 feet of you, you can use your channel divinity, charm them. If they do not pass their saving throw, then they are charmed by you and are friendly until the end of that one minute. So at level 6, you have Dampen Elements. So if you or a creature within 30 feet of you takes either acid, cold, fire, thunder, or lightning damage, you can use your reaction to give them resistance for that damage instance. At level 8, you have Divine Strike. Uh, it's just like the D Divine Strike before, except this time, um, it actually can either do cold, fire, or lightning damage, so it's of your choice, and again, it increases to 2d8 at level 14. At level 17, you have Master of Nature, so when you use your channel divinity before to actually charm plants or beasts, um, you can actually take a moment to command them what they're going to do on their next turn. So up next is the Tempest Cleric, and this one of course is my favorite. Um, I've actually really wanted to play this, I've got a specific build set for it, but at first level you have bonus proficiency with heavy armor and martial weapons. So at level 1 also you have Wrath of the Storm, and so whenever a creature attacks you, you can use a reaction equal to your wisdom modifier per day to deal an extra 2d8 damage of either lightning or thunder damage to that creature. You've also got a channel divinity at level 2 called Destructive Wrath. So whenever you do thunder or lightning damage, you can use this channel divinity to do the max damage with it. At level 6, you have Thunderbolt Strike. So whenever you do lightning damage to a creature, if it is large or smaller, you can push them 10 feet away from you. Like before with the Divine Strikes, you get this at level 8, except this time it does thunder damage. And at 14, then it does 2d8 instead of the 1d8. Lastly, at level 17 for the Tempest, in my opinion, it's the coolest. Whenever you're not indoors, you actually have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. So second to last is the trickery domain. So at first level you can actually use Blessing of the Trickster. What that does is for one hour you can touch a creature and they have advantage on all stealth rolls. At level two you have a new channel divinity which is Invoke Duplicity. And so you can use this channel divinity to create a perfect illusion of yourself and it lasts one minute. And so you can um, have it appear at any time and you can use your bonus action to make them move and act out on your turn. 
At level 6, you have a new channel divinity, which is Cloak of Shadows. So when you use this, you have an action that you can actually vanish completely and turn invisible. Also, like before, you've got another Divine Smite. This time at level 8, it turns into poison damage, dealing 1d8 poison damage, and then at level 14, it does 2d8 poison damage. At level 17, you have improved duplicity. And so with this, instead of using your channel divinity to create one copy of yourself, you now have four, and uh, it's a little bit of a crazy mess. So you can move these all as a bonus action on your turn. Well, lastly, we have the War Domain. And so at first level, you have broke bonus proficiency with heavy armor and martial weapon. Also at level one, you have War Priest. So you can use this as, um, as many times as your wisdom modifier per day. And whenever you take the attack action on your turn, you can use this to do a bonus action as an attack. You've also got another channel divinity, which is Guided Strike. So when you use this, you actually get a plus 10 to attack a creature when you are attacking them with the attack action. So at level six, you have another channel divinity. And this is called War God's Blessing. So instead of you taking that plus 10 to hit a creature, you can actually select a creature within 30 feet of you and they get a plus 10 to hit any creature. At level 8, there's another Divine Strike, except this time it can be any damage that you're actually dealing damage with. So if it's a bludgeoning weapon, you're dealing an extra 1d8 bludgeoning damage. If the weapon instead does radiant damage, you're dealing an extra 1d8 radiant damage. And this again, of course, increases to 2d8 at level 14. And lastly, you have Avatar of Battle. At level 17, you have resistance to all non-magical damage that is bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. So that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that I was worthy of being your deity for this video. Um, next video that deals with clerics, we are going to invite one of my buddies over that's played a cleric quite a bit and I've got some more insight that I can give to you since I've got that build I want to share with you. Um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.